Good day, everyone, everywhere, and special greetings to all those seated in heavenly places in Jesus, our Messiah. The name of this broadcast is Cross the Border, and what we usually do is go through the scripture. Today we're going to start in a new book, and uh, of course it's there's no new book in the scripture, but it's it's new to us here in our trek through the scripture. And uh, anytime we start a book, it's new. Uh, sometimes I've done them before, but started all over. Been through the scripture once and going through it again. And when I finish it again, uh, I'll probably just start all over again as long as the Almighty uh, gives me breath and calls me to do this. I'll keep doing it. And I find that each time I go through the scripture, I see and I understand more. I get the bigger picture where you read the whole word and you understand the whole word and you see how all of the the pieces fit together. <clears throat> yeah, we live in, what a day we live in. Uh, these are times uh, that are interesting, very interesting times, like the old Chinese proverb says, may you live in interesting times. Well, <laughs> if you're alive today, and you don't realize what interesting times we live in, then you're under a rock or living in some kind of delusion or you're cut off from what's what in the world is going on. You just peruse the headlines and they're full of warnings of, of the wars to come in the Mideast. Something is brewing over there. Something is going on. So we have wars and rumors of wars and you'd say, well, that's nothing new, but even the most secure in the world feel that something is going on and are losing their security because the security in the world, of course, has everything to do with money. Yes, money answers all things. But when the money starts to become unstable, well, then the answer to all things becomes unstable. We see a big shift coming on the world scene. And of course, the Word of God has the answer for that big shift that's coming on. And many people believe in the popular prophecy out there, the left behind, late great planet Earth, futurist eschatological scheme of things. So they're all got their rapture seat belts on. And they're ready to be raptured out. I'm still looking for the rapture in the Bible as it's as it is um, defined by the popular eschatology, and I can't find it. Uh, that was a problem for me, you know, some 15 years ago when I started looking into it because I believed in it and and started studying and teaching the scriptures. And I thought, well, you know, I got to look into this and. I got to be able to prove my case, biblically speaking. And I looked in the scripture and lo and behold, I could not find a pre last Trump. You know, you read about it, the last Trump, the Trump will sound and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then those who are alive and remain and we shall be caught up together. So this is a, like a together event. They're going to be caught up together. And I don't see any place where it says that three and a half or seven years before this event, there's going to be a separate resurrection where people are going to be changed in the moment in a twinkling of an eye. I believe this is when the last trump sounds. Uh, that's exactly what it says, too. So there's no pre-last trump event. There's no pre-last trump trump. There's no... The first Trump, second, you know, it, it just, I can't find it. It's not there. I looked and just could not find it. So I've come to the conclusion that this whole rapture terminology has been invented to lead people astray as part of a great delusion. They have relegated the rapture to, I mean, they've relegated the resurrection, you know, where the, the dead in Christ rise first, 
But they're saying, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Those who are alive and remain are going to rise sometimes, sometime before the Trump sounds and be taken out of, taken out of harm's way. Well, you start digging. And this seems to be a very hard scheme that seems so well in, embedded in the minds of not only believers, but unbelievers alike. Because if you talk to most unbelievers, they've heard about Left Behind. Many, many of them, you know, pro probably a good half of uh, five and ten of people who don't really aren't churched and don't really read the Bible. So a lot of them go to church. That doesn't mean that they're really schooled in biblical thought because a lot of churches, uh, they don't even mess with the Bible anymore. They just, you know, the preacher gets up and he gives them a nice heartfelt message every uh, every Sunday. And uh, they hardly study the scripture at all. But most people don't have a clue what the Bible really says. They have a lot of clues about what their preacher says and what is in this popular eschatology. So they've relegated the resurrection of the dead to one of three raptures. They've changed the resurrection of the dead into rapture. No wonder they use a Latin word for their Greek New Testament translated Bible, rapture. And lo and behold, you know, not only could I not find a rapture event separate from the last trump and the resurrection, but I couldn't find a seven year tribulation period either. Couldn't find it. They told me it was Daniel's 70th week, but I did find that. And it followed the 69th week. And the fam most famous uh, supporting verse for their tribulation doctrine is to juxtapose Daniel's 70th week is, they always call on this one first. And it sounds good. I mean, I used to believe it. They told all this stuff to me, and I oh, sounds good to me. Yeah, it must be true. Well, they wouldn't lie to me, would they? Well, many of them, I believe, wouldn't lie to me intentionally. They wouldn't lie to me, would they? Well, if I believe lies and I tell other people lies, am I still lying? Well, I may not be intentionally lying, but lies are coming out of my mouth. And I can say this about men that I've loved that, that taught me lies because they believe the lies. And I believe the lies, and they probably believed them just the same way I did. And even though I looked at the scriptures, I still believed them. But they'll say things like, well, here's how it works. You know, I believe in the gap because Jesus, when he got up and spoke in the temple, and he read a prophetic verse, and he said, this day has this scripture been fulfilled in your ears. And you read about that in the gospel. And then he shut the book. And they say, see, there is a gap there. Because if you open the book back up to where he was reading, well, the next prophetic utterance is one that happens several thousand years later. So see, there's a gap. But there's a problem there. And the problem is this. When you go over to Daniel 70 weeks, we're given a timeline. Yes, a number you're giving numbers. And that's the difference. Where the Messiah stood up and he read a prophecy and he said, this day has this been fulfilled in your ears. He shut the book. There was no chronology given in the text of many different prophetic utterances. There was no chronology saying this is going to happen within a certain allotted period of time. When you go to the 70 weeks of Daniel and read it literally, you see that there is a time frame given for those things to happen and that they will happen within that time frame. 70 always follows 69. There's nothing else. There's no gap. One follows the other. You can't squeeze things in. And when you build your whole eschatological scheme on a gap, which you can only build upon, by supporting verses, which is totally conjecture, it's not explicit in the text, then you've got a problem. Then you're not a literalist. See, 
because the Messiah did come and he did fulfill that prophecy. And the 70th week did follow the 69th. So there's no seven year tribulation period. Yes, there are periods of tribulation that will last seven years and longer, some shorter. Time of Jacob's trouble, yes, foretold, past. Time of Jacob's trouble is past. They want to take everything and squeeze it into a seven year period that is built upon a fallacy, a non literal interpretation, where they have to wrench something out of a time frame explicitly given in the scripture and place it somewhere else. Because if the 70th week is, hasn't happened yet, then what are all the intervening weeks? What about the 40 years or the 40 plus years that Israel existed after the 69th week was completed? So it's 69 weeks unto Messiah the Prince. Okay, they had 69 weeks to wait for Messiah, the Messiah, the Prince to show up. And he did. He showed up right on time. And in the midst of the week, he was cut off. Remember the, the prophet Malachi? You can read it there. It said, And the Lord whom you seek shall, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. And Daniel said, He shall confirm the covenant with many for not one, for one week. It doesn't say he shall enforce the covenant. That is a retranslation with an agenda. A lot of people, well, I'm going to use that version because it backs up my eschatological scheme. But what do they do with Malachi? The Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to the temple. He did. Well, hey, that happened. Remember? 69 weeks unto Messiah the Prince. Guess what? He suddenly, suddenly came to the temple. Even the messenger of the covenant. It doesn't say the enforcer of the covenant. Oh, wait a minute. Because they're trying to make that out to be the Antichrist. There's a lot of problems with that eschatological scheme that they've cooked up. Well, things are happening in the world. We got a war brewing over there. All of these things by design, you know, there, there's an element of, you know, of lack of control where they can't perhaps control everything, you know, and I believe that there's a, there's a bit of chance that's thrown in there that only the almighty uh, has control of just to upset their scheme enough for us to realize that it is false prophecy. But for those that are not born again, are not the elect for those that don't care about the kingdom of God and his commandments, the commandments of the king. It'll be good enough for them to be deceived, to be taken in by the delusion that is going to come upon the whole world. And the scripture says, even the elect, if it were possible. And many of the elect are taken in by the delusion already. But there's going to come a point, a critical juncture, where the eyes of all of the elect will be opened and they will see the delusion. The delusion is so strong that it says even the elect, if it were possible, there will come a point where it will be impossible for the delusion to last any further and the scales will fall from the eyes of all the elect. There's a point of honesty in the scripture where searching through the scriptures, looking to back up the eschatological scheme, the wall of false prophecy that I was taught and believed where I had to say, well, you know, I have to reconsider this. I have to search this out. I need to not build upon supporting verses, a fallacy because you see how even the, the supporting verses are fallacious in the example that I drew where the Messiah shut the book and he said, this day has this prophecy been fulfilled in your ears. <clears throat> and this is the supporting verse. Open the book back up and you'll find out the next prophetic utterances in there is, th is several thousand years off. So they say, well, there's a gap there. And it's true. There is a gap there. There's a gap of time, but there's something else missing. And the missing 
the something that is missing in their supporting example is a time frame for those things to happen. So it doesn't say those things have to happen right away because they're prophetic utterances. Some happened in the past. That one was fulfilled in their ears at that time, and he shut the book. And there were prophecies that were coming in the future, some thousands of years off. But you read the Daniel prophecy, and it says 70 weeks. No gaps, because you have a gap where there's no chronological timeline given for those things to happen is no surprise. That doesn't mean now you can apply a gap to where a time frame, a chronological time frame is given. This is fallacious. And if you hang on to that, I call it self-deception. And if you are the elect hanging on to that self-deception, trying to support something by a fallacious argument, then you're going to be hanging on until finally the last minute if you are the elect, where your eyes will be open. Yes, we are stubborn, are we not? Even the elect, we're all men, that's right, and one can be as stubborn as another. Consider the things I'm saying carefully. These are perilous times that we live in. Changes are coming on the world scene. The Federal Reserve note, which is the world reserve currency, is being allowed to crash on purpose. The United States monetary system, which was taken over in 1913 by the Federal Reserve coup of the United States Treasury. Yes, the enemy got smart, finally. Where is the power in the nation, if not in its money? You gain control of the money, you gain control of the nation. The Federal Reserve coup of the United States Treasury, and as everyone's learning, the Federal Reserve is not federal, and it has no reserve. Well, it, perhaps it has reserve, but it's not for the U.S. government. They use that money power to steal all of our wealth, to number every American, <clears throat> and to... And to uh, number well number every american and to build their new social order and to spread it around the world and their plan has worked perfectly and they did it by getting people to volunteer that's right it's been voluntary the whole socialist the new world social order scheme has been voluntary and now america has become socialist and, you know, that's the difference between communism and socialism. Socialism is, I guess, voluntary. That's right. Communism is socialism by force. And we've seen our examples of that. You have where millions die who would not give in, who would not volunteer. So you have Russia, you have communist China, you know, with and you have uh, Pol Pot, you have all of the murderers, Stalin, who murdered entire classes of people who would not submit to socialism. So communism is forced fascist socialism. But that is the new world order, the new social order that is now going to be imposed. That is the mark of the beast monetary system, which will be imposed upon the entire world. That is why they're taking down the fe their Federal Reserve, the same people that own the Federal Reserve, of course, p placing the blame on corporate greed and the American way, making America the enemy of the world, making us, America, the scapegoat while they legislated away all of the safeguards so they could pull off the downfall of the Federal Reserve. What do they care? They've got their new one world reserve currency planned, one world monetary system plan. See, because they, they don't want any illusions about it now. Everyone looked at the Federal Reserve dollar and they thought, oh, it's American money, it's America's fault. And they hate capitalism, they hate the free market. So they're using the free market and capitalism as a scapegoat for their planned demise and the 
global Great Depression that has just begun. So these are the times we live in, very interesting times and very scary times. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel, I, I, you know, I can feel the fear around me. So what do you do? Fear God, keep his commandments and live. Cross the border into his kingdom, the only kingdom that will last forever. That's what you do. Walk in the spirit and you'll be led by the spirit. That's what we do in these times that are coming upon the earth. You know, and I, I don't for a minute wished I lived in another time. How about the idolatrous 50s? <laughs> oh, back to the days of leave it to beaver. I look back and all I see is rampant idolatry. Oh, they were good economic times. How about the days of Bill Clinton? Great economic times. It's the economy, stupid but just full of idolatry. Fear God and keep his commandments. These are troublous times we're coming into. There is time to repent. And for all of the elect that are still in the delusional, you know, looking at the wall of false prophets, the popular false prophecy out there, wake up. Be honest about the Bible. Be honest about your interpretation. Lay it all down and start all over again consider an alternate view of prophecy. You're listening to Cross the Border. I'm Nicholas. We'll be back in a few minutes and we're going to jump into Joel. Visit crosstheborder.org C-R-O-S-S crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book the rapture will be canceled. That's crossthebordor.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicholas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven year tribulation deception true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people, and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book the rapture will be canceled. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. Welcome back. You're listening to Cross the Border. I find that as I go through the Old Testament, and especially those uh, prophetic books surrounding uh, Israel's times of trouble, that those things are very applicable. Those books and the things written therein are very applicable to uh, the nation there that I live in today. A nation blessed by the Almighty, a nation that started out with a government founded upon the principles that we that are in the scripture itself principles derived from the scripture itself a nation that had such a blessed beginning joel chapter 1 and verse 1 the word of the lord that came to joel the son of pethuel hear this ye old men and give ear all ye inhabitants of the land 
Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. So this is something, we're seeing something that hasn't been seen before. And when we see it, we're to take note of it, and to tell our children and our children's children. We're coming into a time where I believe that America, the land where I sit right now, North America, is going to see trouble like it's never seen trouble before. We'll see it in my lifetime. I'm assured of that. And mainly, well, because America deserves to be judged. You look around, uh, America had a wake up call. I guess 911 was that wake up call. That's uh, uh, something perpetrated behind the scenes by the very government that we're in. Uh, that's worse than being attacked by foreigners from without. That they blamed it on foreigners without is uh, even worse. And that most people, well, probably half the people believe the lies. And of the other half, a very small number really care. Most people just don't care. They go on, and yes, they, they got excited for a little while, and they all went to church for a couple weeks, and they put up signs and flags and said, God bless America, and, and all of the popular patriotism came out. But it all died away, and people, everyone went back to their idolatry. They said, God bless America. And there was one guy who said, America bless God, then God will bless America. People got angry. Mm, yes, people got angry when someone said that. Well, I say it too. Yeah, America bless God, then God will bless America. America will continue along its idolatrous course. History seems to repeat itself over and over. But that doesn't mean you as an individual cannot repent. And that's what we're looking for, individuals to repent. We're all going to die anyway. The sentence has not been lifted. When he said in the beginning, you shall surely die, and we're all born with that same death sentence, we shall surely die. Eternity is at stake. And perhaps your safety is at stake during the times of trouble to come. The safety of you and your family. Do you know what to do? Can you be an example? Can you lead them to the kingdom of God? and to eternal life through the Messiah? Because you could be taken in a moment. A big city could go up in a mushroom cloud tomorrow, next week, five years from now. Do you believe those things will happen? Many people believe they will. It's just a matter of time. It's happened before. It, it'll happen again. America is ripe for judgment. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of peth -uel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. And that which the locust hath left, the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. Awake, you drunkards, and weep, and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. And here we see destruction upon destruction. A, a bad thing comes, a bad thing happens, and it's called the palmer worm. It comes, and the people suffer loss. But before relief comes, before recovery comes, guess what? The locust comes and eats that which the palmer worm left. So we have more destruction coming upon destruction, more loss upon loss. And so the locust leave and everybody goes, oh man, finally it's over. But just when it's over, guess what? That which the locust hath left hath the canker worm eat another disaster, another catastrophe, another 
invasion. Another natural disaster hits. And that which the uh, locust left, now the canker worm is eaten. And so we get through that disaster, disaster upon disaster, upon natural disaster, upon invasion, upon man-made disaster. Right on the foot, the heels of one comes another. That which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. What does it mean? Well, that's what it means. That one affliction, one invasion, one natural disaster upon another. And there's nothing you can do about it. When the locusts came into Egypt, what could they do? This little critter, I mean, if there's one, you know, or if I have a little invasion in my yard or termites or ants or something, I put out a little bait and get rid of them. But when they come like a flood, like a cloud upon the land, what can you do? You, you, you can't just step on them. You can't get out enough DDT or whatever insecticide at the, and besides that, the stores will be empty. You know, what, you, what it's saying here is that you'll have no control. There's nothing you can do but sit back and watch and try to survive through it. One disaster after another invasion after another natural disaster, after a flood, after a hailstorm, after a drought, one after another. That's what Joel is telling the children of Israel. That which the palmer worm hath left, the locusts have eaten. That which the locusts leave, the canker worm eats. That which the canker worm eats, the caterpillar is going to eat. Awake, you drunkards, and weep and howl, all you drinkers of wine, because there's not going to be any new wine for your mouth. And all you pharmaceutical addicts out there, there's not going to be any more pharmaceuticals at the drugstore for you. And all you smokers of cigarettes, there's not going to be any cigarettes to smoke. What are you going to do? Awake, you drunkards, and weep and howl because of the new wine. For it is cut off from your mouth. Whatever your addiction, whatever you've taken pleasure in, it's all going to be cut off from your mouth. You know, I got a better idea. Cut it off now. Obey the Almighty. Leave those things behind. Stop wasting your life on the fulfillment of the lusts of the flesh. All of these things are going to be cut off. And if you miss out on judgment, eh, they'll be cut off when you die. And then where are you going to be? With all your false assurances from all your false prophets and preachers and teachers out there told you, oh, don't worry about a thing. God's law is nailed to the cross. Don't worry about a thing. Go ahead, continue in your lust. Just come to church. Yes, once saved, always saved. And you have a false assurance of salvation. Yeah, it's true. Once saved, always saved. But is your salvation a delusion? Well, look, look around. Are the fruits meat for repentance evident in your life? How about the fruit of the Spirit? Is that yours? Is it evident in your life, the fruit of the Spirit? Where is it? Look around. Or is it just new wine and drugs and cigarettes and, and all of the lusts of the flesh and the adulteries and the fornications? Is that all? Is that the fruit of your life? Judge honestly. Look for the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace self-control are those missing have they been replaced by new wine pharmakia adultery fornication liquor pornography cigarettes let's name your poison awake you drunkards and weep and howl all ye drinkers of wine all ye that seek only to fulfill the lusts of your flesh continually because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation has come up upon my land, strong without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. Now he's going to he's, he's go into some detail. What is this? What, what is this locust, palmer worm, and canker worm, and caterpillar? What is this? A nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. 
and hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. Ah, sounds like an invading army to me. Will they come in? What happens when your land is invaded? All of the joys, all of the simple lusts that you fulfilled every day are going to flee and you're going to be in misery. All of you addicts out there, what are you going to do when you can't feed your need? For a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. Yes, they stripped the bark off the fig tree. A fig tree can't grow figs. That means the fruit of the vine, the wine. The vine is weighed laced. No grapes, no raisins, no wine, no new wine. No figs, he hath made it clean bare, and hath cast it away, and the branches thereof are made white. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers, mourn. Ah, they will mourn. This, uh, like this, of course, this is talking about the priest temple sacrifice system, but we can just carry it over today. They have their own priest temple system going here with their big buildings that they built on 501c3 tax deductible state donations by virtue of getting in bed with the state. Ah, let them mourn. The field is wasted. The land mourneth. For the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, the oil languisheth. Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen. Howl, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up, and the fig tree languisheth, the pomegranate tree the palm tree, the apple tree, even all, all, all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. You know, I'm certainly glad, as the scripture says, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. But what is the joy of the world? Well, they joy in some good things like family, and the good things, all the gift that God gives, even the most evil men, enjoyment in life. Yeah, even the pleasure of sin is a gift from God, because pleasure is a gift from God. That they take and they take pleasure in unrighteousness is a perversion of the gift of God. But uh, they credit themselves. Oh, we have brought this this all upon ourselves. We we have We have made heaven on earth here. Yes, America, heaven on earth. And they take credit to themselves, not giving thanks to God for all the good. Because well, I read the scripture, and I believe it's true, when it says that all good things come from God. And that means all. All means all. That's all all means. If all good things come from God, how can a man take credit for anything good? See, that's called self-righteousness. That's what the world thinks out there they think i'm a good man because they look at the good things in their life the good things they've done the good things they've enjoyed but they deny the god who gave them the good and they take credit for that good themselves that's called self-righteousness certainly god's not going to let me burn in hell i'm a good man and after all i'm better than that guy over i'm better than barack obama i'm better than than Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm better than that guy over there. I'm a good man. Certainly God's not going to let me go to hell with him. See, that's called self-righteousness. The good man gives God thanks. And he says, oh, there but for the grace of God go I. He gives credit where it's due. All good things come from God. Oh, blessed be the name of Yahuwah, blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who has given me good things that I don't deserve. His mercy and his goodness it endures forever. 
I can take credit for nothing. It's his righteousness that brings forth the work, works the fruit of repentance in his life, in my life. It's his righteousness, not my own. Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen, and howl, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up, the fig tree languishes, all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Make sure that your joy is in him and that the joy of the Lord is your strength, not the joy in all of the things and all the good things that you would take credit to yourself for. Gird yourselves and lament, you priests. Howl, you ministers of the altar. Come, lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of my God. For the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. We're talking about terrible times here. You know, you have these, these disasters, these calamities come one upon the other. And just when you think you're having relief, something else comes and takes what's left away. And when you think you're going to get through that, more comes. That's what's coming upon America. These are the times that we're entering into. Time is short. And Satan knows he has but a little while. That's right. And he has a plan. And his plan is to bring his numbering system on the whole earth. It works so well in America. People just lined up and volunteered. Yes, socialism, voluntary socialism. It's now going to change. When they get through this and they bring in, they, they tear down their Federal Reserve note, their world reserve currency to replace it with the new one. It's not going to be voluntary. They're going to enforce it. That's what the scripture tells us. That's what's coming. But before that comes, disaster and judgment are coming. There will be places to be safe. But how do you find those places? If you're not led by his spirit, you're going to be led into disaster. If you have a false assurance of your salvation and your life is not bringing forth the fruit of, of repentance, if the fruit of the spirit is not evident in your life, if you don't obey him now, how are you going to hear him when disaster comes? How are you going to be led by him if you're not being, if you're not allowing him to lead you now? Oh, yeah. You're going to find yourself in derision and confusion and fear is going to come upon you. You're going to be one of those who's going to cry out to the rocks, fall on me. I wish I were dead. Where is the rapture? Why can't I escape? Sanctify ye a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house into the house of the Lord your God, and cry unto the Lord. Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, was the day of the Lord, and as a day of destruction from the Almighty it shall come. Yes, I think for America, the day of the Lord is at hand. This is the call. This is it. As it was, all of these things were an example for us. Should we be treated any different as a nation? Yes, he had his remnant. There were people that were safe. There were people who made it through the destructions and the desolations. And there will be until the end comes for the next 60 years. Will people be able to live through the 40 years inquisition, the final 40 years before the Messiah comes, when the Antichrist and his mark of the beast monetary system with the second beast and the image have full sway in the earth and are forcing everyone, yes, enforcing their world communism, communist fascist system upon the whole earth. Will there be safety? Yeah, there will be safety. God's people, the people called by his name, the people that are living in his kingdom, seated in heavenly places. Many of them will give up their lives. Yeah, will be bartered, but many of them will survive too in safety, 
in the in wilderness, in hidden places from the face of the beast. The beast will be kept in enough confusion for some people to be safe. The Heavenly Father has always kept the beast, the enemy, in confusion enough to keep a remnant safe through any trials and tribulation and travail upon the earth. Haven't you read it? A thousand at thy right hand might fall and 10,000 at thy left, yet it will not come near you. Who's he talking about? He's talking about those that are led by his spirit who he chooses to keep safe through whatever may come. And those people at the same time are willing to lay down their life at any time because they know, they believe, they have faith, they walk by faith. They believe in the promises of the Almighty God. They believe in the resurrection of the dead. As Job said, I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he'll raise me up at the last day when the trump sounds. That's right. So it doesn't matter if I live to that day and I'm one of those that's changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, or if I'm one of the dead in Christ that will rise first. It doesn't matter. I believe. I have faith. I know that my Redeemer liveth with all of his elect from all time. Yes, from Adam and Eve to Job to John the Baptist to me to the very last man that accepts the Messiah before he comes. If you're listening to Cross the Border, we'll be back after the news. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator for his holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.
Welcome back. You're listening to Cross the Border. That's the name of this broadcast. Uh, we're usually going through the Bible, book by book, and we've uh, ended up in Joel. And we're still in chapter one today. Hope you've uh, enjoyed the broadcast so far. I'd like to pray a special blessing upon all of the hearers and all of those that are listening to this broadcast. Um, this is a blessing that I would want prayed on me that, uh, that you learn the fear of the Almighty, that uh, those of you that are still in bondage to sin, that in the middle of your sin, that the fear of the Almighty will suddenly come upon you and that you will obey that fear and repent and learn obedience from him. What a blessing, huh? Times are coming, hard times, times where you need to learn obedience so that you can be led by his spirit. Learn it now while it's easy. This is the warning. The hard times are coming and they're not going to wait. Learn the fear of the Almighty. May it come upon you suddenly when you forget about him and you indulge yourself in whatever lusts of the flesh that you may indulge yourself in. May the fear of the Almighty come suddenly upon you and cause you to repent and cry to him and say, please teach me obedience. I'm afraid of what will happen to me if I do not learn to walk in obedience to you. You know, I can say, honestly, in my life, I got to that point and I said, I'm afraid. What will become of me if I don't learn obedience? Whatever it takes. I need to learn obedience. I need to put down all of these things that are not pleasing to you. I need the fruit of repentance in my life. I need the fruit of the Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the self-control, rather than being controlled by other things, by the lusts of the flesh and all of the things that I've continued to do since I was since I came out of Egypt or Babylon or the world, Sodom and Gomorrah, and those things that I, oh, I found it too difficult to put them down. Please teach me obedience. I'm afraid of what will become of me if I don't learn obedience. No, that's, that's the fear of the Almighty. What will become of me? You know? Only if I know, if I'm walking with you in obedience, will I know that I'm safe. Teach me. Write your law upon my mind and in my heart so that my heart compels me to please you. Let it be in my heart to live a life that's pleasing to you. That's, that's the blessing that I pray upon all the hearers and all those that are listening to this at whatever time you hear it and listening to it the fear of the almighty be afraid of what will happen to you if you don't learn obedience be afraid of the delusion that's upon you because you refuse to allow the holy spirit to work repentance in your life be afraid of the delusion that you're saved when you're not. Do you think you cannot be deceived? Be afraid of that. Fear God. Keep his commandments and live. Cross the border into his kingdom. Let him be your king and live in obedience to him. Show him that you love him. I only want to do the things that please you, Heavenly Father. Abba, Father, Please teach me obedience. Joel chapter 1, verse 14. Sanctify ye a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It's at hand. And destruction from the Almighty shall it come. It's coming. Is not the meat cut off before your eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed is rotten under their clods. 
The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down, for the corn is withered. How do the beasts groan? And herds of cattle is per per are perplexed, because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flames hath burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of waters are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. You feel it in the air. Everyone knows something's coming. This is it. This is what's coming. The day of the Lord, the judgment of the Almighty on a sinful and idolatrous nation is coming. Can he withhold his hand? Should he withhold his hand? Will you plead with him to hold his hand? I hear the cries. Oh, yeah, just no, I think it's too late for America. But is it too late for you? That's the question. It's too late for the nation. It was too late for Israel. How many times? It was too late for all the nations. When the day of the Lord came, destruction from the Almighty, no one could stay it. Will it be too late for you? That's the question. Will you continue in your delusion? Or will you truly begin to fear him and keep his commandments? You know, that's why people don't change. They don't fear God. They have a delusion. Oh, I can keep sinning. I can keep feeding my lusts. I can squander all the good things that the Almighty gives me every day and continue therein. I said the magic words. I've been assured by my pastor that I'm saved. How dare you question my salvation? Ah, what did David say? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. It's not my salvation, it's his. Thy salvation. We're in Joel chapter 2 and verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Yeah, I'm blowing a trumpet here, people. I'm on the wall. I'm blowing the trumpet. Here it comes. It's coming. It cannot be stayed. There's no turning back for America. I'm sorry. But there is turning back for you. And you. And you. You can turn to God. You can turn to the Almighty. You can lay down your idolatry and all of the false assurances of salvation and learn repentance. Allow His Holy Spirit to bring forth the fruit of repentance in your life. Yes, that you might walk in the good works which God has before ordained that you might walk in them. Why do you refuse them any longer? How long will His Holy Spirit contend with you and try to bring you to repentance? How long will you blaspheme his Holy Spirit by not allowing His Holy Spirit to bring forth the fruit of repentance in your life. How long? Till there is no more room for repentance? Till there is no more room for forgiveness? Because without repentance, there is no forgiveness. That's the riddle. That's the answer to the riddle of the unpardonable sin. Whoever blasphemes the Holy Spirit, there will be no forgiveness for him. That's right. If you don't allow the Holy Spirit to bring forth the work of repentance in your life, there is no forgiveness without repentance. If you don't repent, you will not be forgiven. That's why the Messiah stepped out onto the scene and he began his earthly ministry by saying, Repent, for the kingdom is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom is at hand. 
Am I greater than my master? Who cried out and he said, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached? Should I preach it differently than he is? Oh, say the magic words and you'll get to go to heaven when you die. Did he say, repent so you can go to heaven when you die? Never heard that once. That's not in the book. He said, repent for the kingdom is at hand. It's the gospel of the kingdom. There's no new gospel. There's no other gospel. There's one gospel. It's the gospel of the kingdom. If they aren't preaching the gospel of the kingdom, that the kingdom is at hand, and that you need to obey the king, that you need to repent to enter his kingdom, to allow the Holy Spirit to bring forth the fruit of repentance in your life, that you might be saved and endure in his kingdom to the end of your mortality in order to be saved. As I've said before, if you aren't in his kingdom when your mortality comes to its end, you will not be in his kingdom forever. If you want to be there when your mortality ends, then you need to be there now. And you need to remain there and endure to the end to be saved. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Remember my prayer. I pray a blessing in the middle of your sin. May you tremble. May the fear of the Almighty come upon you suddenly and bring forth the fruit of repentance. Put off that wickedness that you've continued in. It's time. It's time to walk in his kingdom. It's time to truly repent and learn obedience to the Almighty. The day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, and a great people and strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, to the years of many generations. Yep, this is not going to happen. So this, is, this hasn't happened in a long time. And it's not going to happen for a long time after. The day of the Lord is at hand. A destruction is coming like you haven't seen in your lifetime for many generations. It's coming. Yeah, we had such destruction on the continent here in America. And it came from, well, without. But it was, the waste came within. A lot of Americans died. Hundreds of thousands of Americans died in the so-called civil war instigated by the little Vatican over there called Washington, D.C. to keep the control of the continent in one place. That's what the civil war was all about. Destruction came then, and it can come again. Don't believe it? Mm, you better believe it. Why shouldn't it? The land is much more wicked than it was then. Here it comes. It's coming. Who can stay it? There's nothing you can do about it. There's no time to save the nation, to bring it back to the 50s, the, the time, the great time of idolatry. That's what people look back to. Oh, that it was back like then. And, you know, the American dream and apple pie and all of that. But I see, I look back at those times and like I said, I see idolatry. That's it. And what did that idolatry bring about? The 60s. Uh-huh. And what happened in the 60s? Freedom. Freedom from God's law. Liberty. Yes, the sexual revolution and socialism. Well, the welfare state. That's what the idolatry brag. So it just gets worse and worse. One perplexity upon another. But people loved it. Yeah, they embraced it. And they forgot all about the law of God and his word and pleasing him. A day of gloominess. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. It's in front of you and it's behind you. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. 
Is that coming? Yes, it's coming. The appearance of them as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, they shall leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. You know, some of these things, uh, this, is, this is what it's like when a great army comes against you. And you can see from the language that it applies today, as much as it applied then. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All the faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. <clears throat> Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. And they shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. Eh, sounds like a lot of fire, destruction, bombs going off, thick clouds of smoke burning, and the Lord shall utter his voice before the army, for his camp very great. You know, I read in Jeremiah, and Jeremiah said that Babylon was a sword of judgment in the hand of the Almighty. That's right. Warfare, when it comes, is a sword of judgment in the hand of the Almighty. Is America ready to be judged? You better believe it. Look at this clown they have in the White House trying to spread sodomy all over the world, trying to strip all of the rights of free men away and succeeding. Plan disasters and catastrophes to implement laws that would never have been implemented in a land of liberty. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. When people draw back from the spirit of the Almighty, when they find his commandments detestable, when they seek to fulfill only the lusts of their flesh by breaking his commandments, then the liberty of abates because this, where the spirit is, there is liberty. Well, there is a liberty of the sons of God that will never be quenched. And though the liberty of our land is leaving so fast and furiously before our eyes that none can stay it, people cry out, but no one seems to be able to stay it, to put an end to it, to stop it from leaving. Because the day of the Lord is at hand. Who can stay it? Judgment is coming. A land so blessed to whom much is given, much is required. Much is now required. Be led by his spirit or be afraid. But in your, let your fear be a godly fear. Fear what will happen to you if you don't learn obedience. That's it. Learn to be led by his spirit. Be really afraid. I, I am afraid. What would happen if I turn back? I can't allow the temptation of sin to overtake my life. I'm afraid. I fear God. I keep his commandments. I say, please write them upon the flesh of my heart. Let it be in me to live a life that is pleasing to you. Fear the Almighty. Keep his commandments and live. Be led by his Spirit. Don't you see what's coming? Don't you fear it? Can't you? Don't you know what it is to be afraid? Or can you be so delusional that you will not be afraid until it's upon you? Ah, that's, that's where most people are. Su such a delusional state. So drunken. 
with idolatry, new wine and pharmakia and food and sin and adultery, that they're never going to see it until it's on them. Then they're going to cry out, but it'll be too late. He will not hear their voice because they have refused to hear his voice. We'll be back in a few minutes. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's CrossTheBorder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicholas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicholas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven year tribulation deception, true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast and the truth about God's chosen people and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's CrossTheBorder.org. You're listening to Cross the Border. We're going through Joel right now. And we've ended up, oh, let's see, and where have we ended up? Chapter 2, and about, I guess we're still, uh, I don't know exactly where I left off, but I'll just jump in here somewhere. Let's see, a dark, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people is strong, there hath not ever been the like. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. And as I said, that uh, Jeremiah told us that the Babylonian army was a sword in the hand of the Almighty. And judgment begins at the house of God. That's what the scripture said. So he used Babylon first to judge Israel, his own nation. Then he used Babylon to judge all the nations round about and then finally, Babylon was judged. Warfare, armies are a sword of judgment in the hand of the Almighty. That's the lesson we have. That's the lesson of today. And so judgment comes and it will come. And it doesn't matter what army, what nation he uses. Everyone's worried about the Chinese or the Russians or this armed nation or that nation, and what we can do to prevent it, there's nothing we can do. When the day of the Almighty comes, there's nothing anyone can do to prevent it. All armies are in his hand. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, they shall leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set 
in battle array before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like mighty men of war. They shall march every one on his ways. They shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is a very is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. It's time. Turn and rend your heart and not your garments. Wow. Rend your heart and not your garments. He's saying, let it be in you not just an outward thing. Let the law be written in your heart, not on tablets of stone. Let it be in you. Rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Yes, repent to him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land, and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith, and no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Now, of course, this is a time when the Heavenly Father is speaking through Joel the prophet to his people. The time we're living in, we can only to escape, to find a place in the wilderness, to be led by his Spirit where we will be safe somewhere where he'll keep the beast in confusion that the harm won't come to us. Are you ready? Will you move like Lot when he was told to get himself up and remove himself from Sodom and Gomorrah? Will you leave? Will you be ready to go? But walk in obedience to the Almighty, to find that place, to minister for him, to bring others with you into his kingdom that they might obtain eternal life? Are you ready to be led by him now? Will you listen to him today when he says, stop doing that? Will you stop doing that? Will you fall down and say, I'm too weak. Teach me obedience. Help me in my weakness. Will you suffer the withdrawals? Do you love him enough to learn obedience, to withdraw yourself from your sin? from all the pleasures that you've taken so easily, from the things that you learned in the ways of the world when you were in Egypt and Sodom and Babylon, and he's called you out, but you've not left those things off. Leave them off. It's time to be led by his spirit and learn obedience. Bring forth the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, self-control. 
fruit of repentance in your life. His kingdom is at hand. The everlasting gospel, the one that he preached, is still being preached today. Repent, for the kingdom is at hand. It's not repent so you can go to heaven when you die. It's repent, for the kingdom is at hand. And the king has a kingdom, and the king has a law, which he desires to inscribe in your mind and upon your heart. Rend your heart and not your garments. Let it be in you. And if it's not, fear God. Cry out. Please let it be in me. Please write your law upon my heart. Please teach me obedience. I'm afraid of what will happen to me if I don't learn to obey you. He says, the Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith. And no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from him, from, the nor from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate. That's what I want. You know, wherever I go, lead me to the place where I'll be safe from your judgment. Because I'm obedient. I desire to be obedient. I will be, obey you if you will lead me. Lead me and I will obey you. And you know what? He will lead you. He's trying to lead you. His Holy Spirit has been trying to work in your life and bring forth the first fruit of the Spirit, which is repentance. Turning away from those things that are not pleasing to the Heavenly Father. Repent. The kingdom is at hand. He says that I'll remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him to a land barren and desolate, will make his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad, then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. The floor shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I set among you. And you shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all your flesh, upon all flesh, and that your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants. It shall come to pass afterward, he said, Yes, it shall come to pass. Do you want to see it? Even in the midst of a terrible time that's coming upon the earth. Your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants, upon the handmaids, in those days I will pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and the remnant of whom the Lord shall call. Joel chapter 3 <clears throat> For behold, in those days, and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations 
and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and given a, and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yea, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will you render me a recompense? And if you recom re recompense me swiftly and speedily, I will return your recompense upon your own head, because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem you have sold unto the Grecians, that you might remove them far upon from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither you have sold them, and I will return your recompense upon your own head, and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they will sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for the Lord hath spoken it. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near, and let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together, round about, thither, Cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened, and come to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get ye down, for the press is full, and the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision that's where we're at today in America as a matter of fact the whole world every individual multitudes it takes a lot of individuals to make up a multitude in the valley of decision what will you choose will you allow his Holy Spirit to bring forth the fruit of repentance in your life? Will you truly repent? Will you choose the fear of the Almighty? Will you say, I fear what will happen to me if I don't change? Will you say, I fear what will happen to me if I don't learn obedience? If I don't put off this wickedness? Ah, please choose fear because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge it's the beginning of wisdom that means you don't know anything you think you know something if you don't fear the Almighty then you know nothing if the if the fear of the Almighty is the beginning of knowledge oh yeah ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of truth that's what we have today people are ever learning they can't get enough All right, so they listen to the big mouths all the popular big mouths on the corporate and the alternative media filling their ears with knowledge continually but never coming to the knowledge of the truth ever learning fear god keep his commandments and live multitudes multitudes in the valley of decision well, make the decision get out of the valley of decision walk with god keep his commandments Plead with him to inscribe them upon your heart. Then you can walk in safety. All the promises of God are yours. Endure in his kingdom to the end. Yes, endure. That means to carry the cross. What does it mean to carry the cross? To crucify the deeds of the flesh. That's what repentance is all about. He said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. You can bear it. You can do it. He will be with you. Make the decision and do it.
multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth will shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people. Yes, Yahuwah, the Almighty, he will be the hope of his people through his Messiah, whose name means the Almighty by name, by name, yes. The Creator by name is our salvation, Yahuwah, Yahushua, our Creator by, by his name, he is our salvation. And the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall you know that I am Yahuwah, your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness, for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. And we went through uh, the book of Revelation, and we read about that. We read about the millennial reign of the Messiah from Jerusalem. And these lands will be desolate then. Egypt will be a desolation. Edom will be a wilderness because of the violence of the children of Judah. And this is our hope. And this is the hope of Israel. The Messiah, all of the hope, all of the promises are fulfilled in Messiah. That's right. Everything is fulfilled in Messiah. Don't look for anything else. If it's not fulfilled in Messiah, then it's a false fulfillment you're looking for. Whether you're a Jew, whether you're an Israelite or not, whether you know what you are or not, because many who are of the seed of Israel don't even know it. Many of Ephraim don't know who they are. And it's fine. It doesn't matter because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's right. The kingdom of God, you know, the one that the Messiah preached, repent for the kingdom is at hand. Flesh and blood can't inherit it. It doesn't matter what your genealogy is. It doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile, whether you're a Greek or a Roman, or whether you have Ephraim or Judah or Naphtali. It doesn't matter. All the promises of God are yes and amen, and they are all fulfilled in Messiah. Israel is the new covenant. It's not written in the flesh. All of the promises are fulfilled in Messiah, and they will be fulfilled. All of those promises will be fulfilled in Messiah when he returns for the millennial reign. His chosen nation, mm -hmm, yes, it's a holy nation, and it's over all the earth, and it's fulfilled in Messiah. That's all I can say. I'm not a replacement theologian. Uh, I don't think that the church, yes, the physical church replaced physical Israel. I'm not, I don't believe that for a minute. I believe the spiritual ecclesia was always his chosen people, his holy nation, the remnant. When Israel was a nation, <clears throat> remember, the prophet was told, I have yet 7,000. He had a remnant. They were the true ecclesia. They were the true holy nation. Yes, he had a physical nation, but all of the promises are fulfilled in the holy nation through Messiah. Job proclaimed it even before 
the law and the prophets. And he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Yeah, it was fulfilled in Messiah. Adam and Eve, standing before the great high priest, the pre-incarnate Messiah, when he told them about the seed of the woman, the Redeemer, which Job proclaimed when he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Everything is fulfilled in him. And everyone is grafted in. He grafted in the heathen before, when Israel was a nation, over and over, into the seed line of the Messiah, grafted in. Grafted in before, grafted in afterwards. Doesn't matter whether you were a, a son of, of the bondwoman or the free. You could be grafted in because great is his mercy and his loving kindness from generation to generation. You've been listening to Cross the Border. I'm Nicholas. In everything you say and everything you do, bless his holy name. Hallelujah.